Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Interpret a Skeleton for the Skeleton section of Module 2. And so they have another partially implemented skeleton. We're going to read through it, try to figure out what it does, and then test it. Um, and you might be thinking to yourself, I don't want to do that. Well, if you don't want to do that, then, you know, that's okay. But if you are wanting to do this, but thinking that, hey, how will I know if it's working or not? That's one of the fun parts about what we're about to do, is that we're going to prove that it works. And if it doesn't work exactly the way that the people who wrote this uh, thought that it should, that's fine. So let's think about it. We have a function called find max repeat count in word. Okay. We have a function called find first word with most repeated characters. So it wants us to break up the individual words into individual, break up an individual word, break up individual words. Hmm. That's probably because on line 17 it looks like we're calling that. So they're saying that for each word we're going to do something where we find the max repeat count in a word. So that's why it says words there. Uh, count the instances of each letter, iterate all the counts to find the highest, return this word's max repeat count. We're going to break up an input text into words, space delimited, so we got like a sentence that comes in for each word. Uh, var, repeat count for word, uh, if the max repeat count is higher than the average, sorry, than the overall max repeat count, then update max repeat count overall, update word with max repeat count, and then return word with max repeat So here we're returning a word, here we're returning a count, for both of those, those are scalars, so I'm thinking an assertion function that's going to make sense for this is assert equal. Nicely because I've got a string coming back in one instance and a number, so I can use assert equal for both of those. So it's like actual expected and a test name. And if you're wondering why I'm writing this out instead of copying and pasting, um, it's because I think that you should write it out instead of copying and pasting. The more times you write this, the easier it will be for you to not think about it while you're doing it. And maybe if you're not, not thinking about it, you're thinking about it a little bit, uh, it's just a good idea. The more you do these kind of things, the easier it's going to get, and there's no way to get that unless you just keep doing them. So, failed a test name, expected, uh, we'll go on then, plus expected, plus end quote, but got, plus actual, plus the end quote. Okay, cool. Then for our test cases, let's think about it. We have two functions, so we're going to have a test case at least for each one of them. So we'll say find max repeat count in word. So we need a word for the input for that. So we'll say variable input one is equal to, uh, let's say past. That's a good one. A variable actual one is going to be equal to a call to our find max repeat count in word on input one. Variable expected one is going to be equal to uh, two. And then we'll call assert equal with a couple of things. Actual one, expected one, and should return two for a word with max repeat. Mm. For a word where, oh man, it's a really weird way to say that. So it's like should return to for a word uh, where uh, the number of, man, this is this is awkward. Uh, there we go. Should return to. It totally should. So variable input two is going to be equal to something we're passing to this first, find first word with most repeated characters. So we'll say I passed my exam are, mm, should we put a comma? No, let's leave the commas out for now. Are you not entertained? Sure. And so you figure that the one that's going to have the most repeated characters is this one with three. Um, yeah, that'll work. So variable actual two is equal to, and we'll call this second function, find first word with most repeated characters. And we'll pass in input two is going to be inputting to that. Variable expected two is going to be equal to uh, entertained, should be the one with the most repeated characters, I think. Are you not my exam passed? Sure. So we'll say entertained. And we'll create a call to assert equal, which is going to be our actual two, 
are expected to, and should return word with most repeated characters. There you go, that one was a little bit easier. And let's revisit this test name for a word uh, with, mm, man, that's really difficult to write. So we're copping out, we're just gonna say should return to. Um, ah, here we go, for given word, there we go. Excellent, so we've got an assertion function, we've got two test cases, one where we're gonna test the first function, one where we're gonna test the second function. And so from this point, let's go ahead and, uh, yeah, have a look. So let's start with find max repeat count in Word. Break up individual word into individual letters. Okay, so we'll say variable letters is equal to word dot split on nothing. And that's gonna break up all the uh, letters in Word into an array of letters. Count the instances of each letter. Now this is actually reminiscent of a problem that you did in module one. We have a uh, an array of letters, and we want to count the instances of those letters. So, the way that we're going to do that, if we can ever get back to what we had, uh, there we go, is we'll say variable letter count is equal to an empty object. We're going to iterate over letters. We are going to check to see if letter count already has the letter. So, we'll say if letter count at letters at i and things are starting to get a little complicated there so let's say current letter is equal to letters at i that alias is going to make things a little bit easier here so instead of saying letters at i we'll say if the letter count for the current letter is equal to undefined then we know we haven't seen that letter yet and so we need to instantiate it as one because we've now seen it one time so we'll say letter count at the current letter oh boy oh boy back up is equal to one otherwise we have seen it and in that case we're going to take whatever it was and increment it after which letter count is going to be an object that has a count for all of the letters now i think that there's a problem in module one called like count all characters something like that that's going to be the one that you want to revisit if what I just did is too uh, advanced or too quick for that. Uh, for your current level of understanding, let's say. So iterate all the counts and find the highest. So for this one, there's a couple of ways that we could do this. Iterate the counts and find the highest. What I would say is that it's possible for us to say variable max is equal to zero. Now what we're assuming is that there is at least one letter in the input word because find max repeat count in word on an empty string is really not gonna happen, right? Because we have an input text here, we're not gonna be breaking up anything into an individual string. So we're never actually gonna call find max repeat count on an empty string. And in every other case, there's going to be one character that has at least one as its value. So if we set the initial max to be zero, this cannot help but be replaced. So with that in mind, we start with max, we iterate over our letter count object. So we'll say for variable letter, because that's going to represent the key, and we built the object using current letters, so we can say variable letter in, uh, what's our thing, letter count. And then for each one of those, we're going to compare to see if the count for the given letter is greater than max. So if letter count at letter is greater than max, we're going to reassign max to be equal to the letter count for the given letter. After that, max will have been assigned to the maximum count for the letter, uh, for this word, and then we're just going to return max. Now we're going to go down here, and we're going to comment out the test for our second test, because we haven't written that function yet, so we don't really care about it. Let's run this and see if past works, and then we'll do a little finic, uh, playing with it. Okay, so that worked. Let's change it to 3, and see if that still works. So it should return 3 for the given word. That works as well. Let's uh, add in a couple of E's. We'll make it four E's and run and see if that works for four. So it looks like our, our function's working. Let's return it back to past with the assumption that it's going to return the correct amount. For any word that we give it, it'll give us a good accurate count of how many letters 
uh, what, how do you say this? It's such a difficult thing to say off the top of your head. It'll give us an accurate count of the maximum number of times a character is repeated within a given word. Boy, that just, just rolls right off the tongue. Anyway, let's uncomment out this test and come back out to find first word with most repeated characters. So we have two variables, max repeated count overall and word with max repeat count. So they're going to start that as an empty string. Break up the input text into words. Okay, so we'll say variable words is equal to text dot split on a space. And that's what space delimited means. Now for each word, repeat count in word is equal to find max repeat count in word called on word. Now, one of the things that this is showing is that it probably wants us to use something like for each, but we're not going to use for each. And the reason is, is that we haven't really gone over it yet and you don't need it for the interview. So we're going to avoid that for now. But keep in mind that you definitely could do a lot of with uh, these problems with higher order functions. So let's create a for loop. We already have a for loop with i, so let's make a j. j is equal to zero. j is less than words dot length. j plus plus. And then we're going to wrap this for loop around all of this stuff. So here's where the for loop starts. Here's where it ends. All this is happening per each iteration. So they're saying variable repeat count for word is equal to find max repeat count in word for word. Now word isn't defined but words at j could be, or we could say something like variable word is equal to words at j. That's an alias for us, and so we can now use this line exactly as it is. So word is equal to words at j, variable repeat count for word is equal to find max repeat count in word on the word, if max repeat count is higher than the overall max repeat count. So we'll just write that out exactly as it is. If max repeat count, which would be repeat count for word is greater than the overall max repeat count, which is max repeat count overall. And we're going to wrap our if statement brackets around all of that. Update max repeat count overall. So that means that max repeat count overall is equal to repeat count for word. Update word with max repeat count. So the word that has this current max repeat count is this variable, and we'll set it equal to, if we think about where we're doing all of this, it's inside of this for loop, and we have word. That's the one that we found the max repeat count for for the current word. So we copy that. Word with max repeat count is now whatever word prompted all of this. And finally, we'll return word with max repeat count. So as you can see, we pretty much have just followed the skeleton. And you might notice that when we have a skeleton like this, where all of the thought has already been done, it's much easier to come up with the code. Similarly, if the code doesn't work, we can get rid of the code and make sure that it lines up with the pseudocode that's already written. So anyway, we've got that, we've got that. Now we have a test down here that should return entertained after, we've, after we run it. So let's go ahead and run. And we're passed for both. Now, let's adjust some things. We'll say entertain now wants us to find the first word with the most repeated characters. So perhaps they would want us to not replace the word if we find another one with the same amount of repeated letters. So entertained has one, two, three E's. And I think that that's it. Two T's. Okay, so three E's. So let's put, let's put three S's in past. So now, hopefully, if it finds the first one, it's going to find past as the one that it, uh, it returns. So if we run that, we're looking good. Now let's add a, uh, a, a, M, A, A, okay, so there should be four in that. So let's make that the most repeated word and run it with that. And we're in good shape. So as you can see, when we have a skeleton that we'll theoretically learn to start deriving ourselves, it can be much easier to come up with uh, instances that you've already done, which is to say, count the instances of each letter. Now, this is something that we've done previously in Module 1, and we know to do it because when we're thinking about how to do the problem initially, you came up with these, or these were come, came up with for us, English language statements that describe what the code should do. I cannot stress the importance of this idea. Come up with a way to solve the problem that's independent of code. That way, if the code doesn't work or if you need to do something different, you can. And take my word for this, it's a thousand times easier to reason about this kind of stuff in the interview than it is this. 
Once you write code, you tend to get very attached to it, so it can be very difficult to adjust during the interview. But this kind of stuff, you do this all the time. So now that we have all of that, we'll go ahead and copy everything and do the final portion of this, even though it's not really necessary. Come back here, paste it in, have a look at it, pat ourselves on the back for an excellent job well done. Um, hopefully we won't have to eat our words for that because we should run the test now. It is correct. We can now celebrate. Everybody's having a good time, hopefully. Anyway, thanks for watching this video. I hope you're enjoying them so far. I hope you're getting some use out of the, uh, the skeletons as we've written them and these walkthroughs. A lot of times seeing these patterns once through with somebody else doing them can be a good way to get yourself sort of unstuck if you find yourself, well, stuck. And so yeah, hope you're enjoying them. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.